This video will share tips on safe transport of adult critically ill patients and is designed for junior doctors who are required to perform this task due to resource constraints. A critically ill patient is a patient at risk of life-threatening events. This includes patients who are on various life support but also patients who appear stable but are at risk of sudden deterioration. This video is part 2 and will show steps for patient preparation. Please also view part 1 which is on equipment preparation. The steps for both equipment and patient preparation can be easily recalled following the acronym DOCTORS A, B, C, D, E commonly used by various algorithms. The letters of the acronym are Assess if the patient is stable or if further stabilization measures are required. In some situations, a patient may be too unstable and the transfer needs to be aborted. Check the vital signs of the patient. Obtain important patient history. Wear personal protective equipment such as a plastic apron and gloves. Check the patient's response to verbal or tactile stimuli to monitor changes in this during the transfer. Is the patient agitated, requiring increased sedation? If any of the vital signs are abnormal, consult senior help immediately. Also seek help if the patient is at high risk of deterioration during the transfer, requiring a senior doctor to lead the team. The remainder of the acronym ABCDE will apply to both equipment and patient preparation. We will now go through the steps for patient preparation. If the patient is not intubated, assess if the patient is able to speak. Listen for signs of upper airway obstruction such as strider. Critically ill patients are often intubated. This does not mean the airway is clear. An endotracheal tube can be dislodged, blocked, placed too deep or inadvertently placed in the esophagus. Manually ventilate the patient using a self-inflating bag. The patient should be easy to ventilate with symmetrical rise and fall of the chest. There should be no gurgling or leaking sounds from the throat. Auscultate for bilateral breath sounds. Note the size of the endotracheal tube and the marking at the lip. If manual ventilation feels tight, First, rule out a blocked tube. Insert a soft suction catheter which should pass down easily for most of its length. If you encounter resistance, the tube may be blocked or kinked. If the tube is patent but manual ventilation feels tight, this could be due to lung pathology. Consult senior help. If there are gurgling or leaking sounds from the throat, the tube could be out. Call for help to perform direct laryngoscopy immediately. Never solve the problem by further inflating the cuff. This may obliterate the leaking sound even if the patient has self-extubated. Check the patient's colour and saturation display. Saturation should be above 95%. Check the oxygen flow required to achieve this. If the patient's saturation is below 92%, despite high oxygen flows, a senior doctor should perform the transfer. 
If the patient has a chest tube, follow the path from the point of insertion down to the underwater seal to look for dislodgement, kinking or blockage. All connections must be tight. Ensure the chest drain is connected to the correct part of the underwater seal. A chest tube that is patent and in situ will show either bubbling or swinging of the meniscus of the underwater seal. Absence of neither signs may indicate the chest tube is incorrectly placed or blocked. Feel the patient's pulse. Check the heart rate, ECG rhythm and blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure should be more than 90 mm of mercury. Look at the rate of vasopressor infusions. If any vasopressor infusion is finishing, change it to a full syringe prior to the transfer. Anticipate a drop in blood pressure following a syringe change as interruption to the infusion has occurred. The syringe pump must be fully charged. Ensure there's enough IV access and identify a primary line for administration of emergency drugs. Check the patient's Glasgow Coma Scale, pupillary response and blood sugar. Check the patient's temperature Ensure lines and drains are well secured to avoid dislodgement. Remove non-vital pumps to simplify the transport. Confirm the destination is ready to receive the patient. For the transfer between beds, put all drips and drains onto the patient's bed. If infusion pumps have to be put on the bed, in most instances, the safest place is near the patient's legs. If the patient has a chest drain, clamp this before raising the underwater seal. During the transfer between beds, ensure that all brakes are applied. The person holding the head should disconnect the ETT from the self-inflating bag. The ETT is held using two fingers just above the patient's lip. This person will provide the timing for patient movement across beds. Following this movement, existing chest drains must be immediately repositioned below the patient and unclamped. A chest drain must never be clamped throughout the duration of the transfer as this can lead to complications such as cardiac arrest. Connect the patient to a transport monitor with continuous ECG, saturation and blood pressure. Set the blood pressure to auto cycle every 3 minutes. If the patient is manually ventilated, continue to place two fingers on the tube just above the patient's lips throughout the transfer to monitor tube position and prevent dislodgement. The patient must be pushed feet first with the monitor facing the doctor. No equipment should be resting on the patient. The patient's parameters should be stable. If the patient is unstable, a senior person should lead the transfer. In an ideal situation, transporting a critically ill patient should only be performed by highly trained professionals. We hope that this video will contribute towards patient safety during transport by doctors not formally trained for this task.